<laughs> Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob has a podcast. And now, here's the guy who's about to find out where is the beef. Rob Sesternino, hello everybody and welcome to a very special episode of Rob Has a Podcast. We are live here on Monday night, August 5th, and we are going to find out tonight what two survivor, uh, dare I say, legends are up to. Uh, we're going to be talking about some family beef. Joining us on the show tonight, uh, first off, uh, let's start with the, the, man, uh, the man behind the show uh, tonight. Here he is, you know uh, Lex Vandenberg. Lex, how are you? Hey, what's up, brother? It's good to see you. Thanks for having us. Good, yeah, good to see you too. And then here are the guys <laughs> who are behind the beef. Uh, here is Big Tom and Bucky Bo Buchanan. Hello, everybody. We what? can't see y'all, but we, we hear you. <laughs> okay, good. Well, we can see you we guys. We had a plug-in failure. <laughs> I can see, see y'all's ugly faces. No problem. Yes. That's all that matters. Okay. <laughs> all right, here we go. So we are live here uh, on robhasawebsite.com and on YouTube. Uh, so we are going to be uh, talking to Lex and Big Tom, talking about what uh, exactly is Family Beef, where we can watch it, and uh, all sorts of stuff. We'll take your questions as well here in the chat room on robhasawebsite.com and on our YouTube channel, which you can go to at robhasawebsite.com slash YouTube and and look at this, Big Tom. Did you ever live to see, or think you'd live to see the day when you'd be on a Google Hangout? <laughs> no, I've been. I I thought you know I had a horn that you hollered through for and a string. I, I I still don't know how to Google or goggle or YouTube either. I think yeah. when Tom when Tom hears the word Google, he thinks that's what you do when you grab a jar of moonshine and you start to drink it. You take a Google. <laughs> with you. That's that's a fact. <laughs> but, All right, well, but, but really, uh, Rob, I've never done any of this. I, I mean, I'm computer illiterate. And I, and this is uh, this is my first. Uh, what do you a cipher or a snipe? Yeah, <laughs> whatever we're doing. Just as, as long as you keep your clothes on, and uh, this is all going to be good. <laughs> okay, no problem. Yeah, none of this Anthony Weiner business. Yeah, that <laughs> was for sure. Yeah. All right. So, uh, I guess let's start off. T tell us about what is uh, family beef and uh, how did how did this uh, come to be? Well, <laughs> Tom, I'm gonna let you take this one. I want to hear what you got to say. Oh, Lex, I thought that'd be uh, uh, Lex is the big part of why we've had the family beef. We've had the beef up here for a hundred years uh, in Rich Valley, but. The family beef, uh, Legs had to, him and Kelly had this concept that we should uh, have this film. And so let him tell you how that came about because we were just up here uh, just happy as clams, so, you know, farming. We're right. just doing like we do every day except uh, with, so everybody on the outside can see what it's like in Rich Valley for the Buchanans. And it's a lot of ups and downs and... <laughs> Well, you you'll get to see it's a we're definitely an interesting bunch. Well, we did, we decided we wanted to bring God perish the word we want to bring Hollywood to Rich Valley. So, you know, for years and years, my wife Kelly and I have been taking our kids out to visit Tom and his family because after Survivor Africa and All Stars, I mean the Buchanans really became as much kin to us and family to us as our own family. And you know that that alliance that Tom and I made, God, it must be 12 years ago now. Is still holding strong. We still got each other's backs. And the thing is, after Africa, we just we got super close. We'd come out and visit them on the farm year after year. And I mean, it became apparent to us that there was something really, really special about Rich Valley, Southwestern Virginia, and Valley View Farms and the Buchanan family. I mean, there you've got a situation where you've got amazing larger than life characters it's not you know we've all gotten familiar with big tom on survivor uh but the fact of the matter is there's a whole family of big toms out there you've got his dad poppy who actually turned 80 yesterday so happy birthday poppy happy birthday poppy yep you've got his son Bo, who uh tom likes to refer as family goober um they've all got <laughs> another thing They've all got their better halves. The the women, the Buchanan women, twice as smart and twice as good looking as the Buchanan men. 
And and then there's the the rest of the cast of characters. They are literally like cartoon characters that just kind of live among us, those of us who are in the real world. But then you combine that, these amazing characters full of heart and humor, and they've got this farm, this 2,000-acre cattle farm in one of the most beautiful parts of the world, in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. And we're living in an age, in this economy, where the corporate-owned factory farm is the... is, is that they rule, and in order to survive, pardon the pun, but in order to survive and have your own family farm in this day and age, it is, I mean, it is far, far harder than anything any of us ever did on Survivor. This is, I mean, imagine the worst case, hardest case scenario. These guys are in the thick of it every day, and it became apparent to us that there was a great story there, and a few years ago, after one of our vacations there, my wife Kelly said, you know what, there is, there's something really special here, and this really ought to be on TV. People, we need to share this with everybody. And we partnered up with some friends of ours here in Santa Cruz, uh, Susan, Regan, and Tam with uh, Tough Cubby Entertainment and Tam Communications. We decided to, uh, together, go out and shoot a sizzle reel to see if we could actually get somebody in Hollywood exci as excited about this as we were uh, we went out and we shot some footage. We've been sh we shopped it for a few months, and lo and behold, National Geographic. You know, I mean, God, we couldn't have wished for a better a better network to pick us up. They saw the magic that we saw, and now we've got this TV show. We're going to be showing two pilot episodes, uh, the first two episodes, day after tomorrow on August seventh at nine p.m. on Nat Geo, and this is a story of the Buchanan family, their farm their day-to-day -day struggles on being able to pay their farm payments, make their bills, make an honest living, somehow have these three alpha males, because between Tom, Poppy, and Bo, you've got three extremely strong-minded men that honestly have a really hard time get, not really getting along, but, but seeing eye-to-eye -eye and, making, and making their minds up about something together. It, I mean, it is great, great TV. And between that and the love, you've got to show that episode after episode, week after week, is going to keep everybody on the edge of their seats. All right, so if you're checking this out in the archives, the show is on Wednesday night on Nat Geo. Nat Geo regular, right? Right. Uh, Nat Although, Geo. Uh, they they yes. will also be showing, I, I guess they're... Um, it's going to be on Nat National Geographic TV, and um, they're also going to be showing, I don't know the date or the time, but they're also going to be showing the show on Nat Geo Wild at a later date, maybe a week later, something like that. Okay, and what time on Wednesday on Nat Geo? 9 p.m. and 9.30. So there's going to be two episodes back-to-back. -back. Between 9 and 10, you are going to have a full hour of all you can stand of the Buchanans, their farm, and it's going to leave you're going to you're going to come back for more. Okay. Tom, what was it like having all of those uh cameras uh filming you uh in your hometown? Were you, did that make you very popular? <laughs> well, the population here is about 25 and uh <laughs> I'll be dang if all 25 of them didn't didn't have their neck stuck out like a turkey, you know, looking around every corner and and saying what in the hell's going on up there? And uh, and actually, you know, we didn't say much about it because we didn't know what. You know, we were just going on uh, everyday farm life because you know we had cows having calves, we had uh, we were feeding cattle, we we were busy doing farm stuff. And then with these cameras, you know, we was going. Those guys, we're getting in the way. Yeah, they, and so. <laughs> uh, it, it, it was a cluster for for a while, and, and plus all everybody was saying, "Now what's going on?" So, uh, but it, it was it ended up. I mean, it was a lot of fun uh, uh, doing it, but it was so different than what I was used to, and uh, it was a lot harder than Survivor because uh, you know it was a uh, fighting uh, Bo and Poppy and uh, this woman of mine. Uh, Lord, trying to eat her food is uh is been one of the biggest jobs we've had. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna call horseshit right now because your wife Sandy makes the best biscuits and gravy, except for maybe your mama Genevieve. But you've got to stop. You've got to stop talking trash about your wife's cooking because your wife's cooking is top shelf, Tom. 
<laughs> well, you know, she when we first got married, she had an epidemic up here. Uh, we all got the scares, and the cattle did too. I don't know what in the world she cooked, but uh, it took a long time before. It took a lot of practice. 34 years that we got her trained in for a biscuit. <laughs> really? Uh, Big Tom, I didn't know this. Your, your, is your wife a, a good cook or a bad cook? Careful, Tom. Uh, she, she's a good woman, and she sashays around the kitchen pretty good, but uh, what comes out is... Uh, is a multiple guess. Yeah, I, I've got one of those at home too, Big Tom, so I can relate to that. <laughs> I mean, she's a good woman. She can swing a mop, but I'm telling you, she slings. Uh, it's a, one time I, I did eat some potpourri and about killed myself. I thought it was some of her stew, so if that tells you something, that, uh, that was a late on a Saturday night, though, but uh, that ought to tell you, whatever's in the pot, I try to eat. <laughs> Tom, did anybody in your family end up getting a big head of uh, being on the reality show? You've been through this before. You've done Survivor twice. But did, for your family members, did anybody sort of uh, start to get an ego about being a reality TV star? Well, uh, I'd like to say, you know, Bo did because, uh, <laughs> I mean, he, <laughs> oh, he, he is a... Uh, you know, I mean, he is strutting around in uh, those uh, uh, cow poop boots of his and uh, uh, think he is somebody. But, you know, in all actuality, uh, we are just getting off the ground and, and, and not really, you know, and we don't even know how high we're flying. And so after Wednesday, I think we'll have a better concept of, uh, of – uh, that big head that kind of thing. Well, but right let's, now... Uh, let's let's we, speak some truth here, Tom, today? because I, I don't think you're fit to answer that question, frankly. Because <laughs> well, I think... When, we're, when, we're when still, I, I we're think Bo bad. knows the answer to this question, right, Bo? Who uh, had the well, biggest head? Knows. Well, everybody knows that we're big egos and, uh, well, big all around, but really oh. we're just blessed to have this opportunity and uh, we're trying to make the best of it, but now... Anybody that knows my daddy knows that his head swells by looking at him, much less <laughs> with the camera on you. So. Well, I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you something, Rob. When I came out, when I went out a, a few weeks ago with my son just to have a little vacation out on, out, out on the farm in Ridge Valley, I was able to bring the first two episodes, the final cuts. They were, I mean, this, no one had ever seen this. I hadn't even seen the final cut yet, and I brought it so we could watch it with the family. I brought that those two DVDs and we watched it. We had a large time, but if you were to ask Tom, I, I I'd venture to guess if you asked Tom how many times he actually watched it, he might not actually be completely honest with you because, well, how many times do you think you watched that show, Tom? Uh, I, I watched it long enough to know that I'm a star. Uh, uh, that's what I are. <laughs> I really. One thing watching yourself, you know, it's hard not to like yourself. I was going, <laughs> my God, I'm looking good. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I brought those DVDs home and they didn't work anymore because they they'd been watched, <laughs> they them watched out. until we wore them out. Yeah. Well, I used to go to Johnny Fairplay's apartment, so I know what that's like to watch somebody <laughs> watch themselves over and over, and over oh. again on TV. Yeah, yeah, I said, well, you know, uh, I can't help it, but I love me. The rest of them guys were in my way. You know, that's kind of the way I felt. <laughs> but we both uh, we both were really pleased to have some footage of all three of us together, Poppy being 80, and uh, it, it was really, really good for us to see, to see him and uh, for people to get an idea of, of how we were brought up and where our morals come from and, you know, he's kind of the staple of our family. And it's, uh, we, we really were glad to see him on it. And uh, to let everybody get an idea of what we're made of is, uh, is poppy through and through. No, it, I mean, it is, how does this and, and I have to say, all, all joking aside, as, you know, from my vantage point, which it was great to be behind the camera for once and not be in front. I, just, I, I love being able to just kind of, you know, work as a producer. And I have to say, all of us were amazed, right down to the authentic productions, the, these big Hollywood producers that came out and made, you know, and, and did the shooting and the producing. It was amazing to all of us how unaffected all of these folks, the Buchanan family, how unaffected they were by the cameras. We had, 
we had full crew, 14, 15, 20 people with cameras all around them. And you know what? Not one of them acted like there was a camera around them. And that was amazing because they were, without us having to do any kind of coaching, they were completely natural. And you don't know what you're going to get when you go out and shoot this kind of a production. And God knows, Nat Geo, they bankrolled us. They put a lot of money behind this project. And you're going to see that on, on Wednesday night because it, it is a beautiful looking show. So it's obviously there's a lot of money in it. But you don't know when you invest if the people, the first time you bring out all these cameras, if they're going to actually, you know, really deliver and they're going to be natural because this is nothing scripted, nothing is preset. We're just basically setting up cameras and hoping that magic happens and that they act natural and it doesn't look like a bunch of people trying to, you know, kind of be funny for the camera. And the Buchanans were, and their neighbors, the rest of their family were, it's amazing how natural they were and unaffected they were by the cameras. So how does this show compare to a show like Duck Dynasty? Is it is it similar in tone to a show like that? I mean, I'd say it's um it's it's similar in that it's 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 it, we're capturing you know a, just a slice of life in that part of the country. I think that um you know and 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 we often found ourselves kind of sometimes you know comparing what was going on and the feel of it to Duck Dynasty. I think what's different about Family Beef and Duck Dynasty is that. Really, Duck Dynasty is really, it's a, uh, they capture, you know, this, this family and kind of the daily conversations and the vibe and, and whatnot. But this, what this show has that I think Duck Dynasty, Duck Dynasty doesn't have is every episode is a complete story. I mean, you've got, you've got a complete story arc. There's a beginning, a middle, and there are high stakes. Every episode has some kind of a high stakes, almost life or death sort of story that happens where, you know, you're on the edge of your seat. There is something... There, there's a complete plot and storyline happening, and you just can't wait to see how it all ends up. Rather than just feeling like you're kind of a fly on the wall and you're just privy to, you know, just hanging out with with the guys. Duck Dynasty is more about, you know, you're hanging with those guys, you're seeing what's going on. This is really, it's an episodic in that every episode is a complete story with, you know, drama, tension, and you know, a happier, sad ending. Now, hey, hey, Rob. Yeah. I, Rob, I don't know. I don't know if you remember, but I was on uh, Survivor ten years ago, so I'm a I'm a lot I was a, way ahead of Duck Dynasty, and you'll see uh, <laughs> you'll see old Big Tom. I mean, you know, I, I, we had our own uh, uh, life going on way before any of those shows going on. So you know, uh, I've not seen that uh, the Duck Dynasty uh, to compare, but. Uh, just a little clip or something, but I'm saying, you know, what we were, we're we've been a farm a long time, and what what you see is what you get right from the get go, and it's been there a long time. And that, now, I mean, that's that's really what we set out to do. We wanted, you know, we didn't want to mess with the. I mean, the formula was perfect as it was. The the experience that my wife Kelly and I and my family had vis visiting and getting into the Buchanan's. We just wanted people to be able to experience and see that, and without messing with it, without trying to make it anything that it wasn't. I mean, really, like Tom says, what you see is what you get. This is what the Buchanan family have been doing uh, for generations, and and it's the it's the life that you know. Hopefully, they're going to be doing for generations to come. Now, uh, last year there was a show with another Survivor family. Uh, there was the. Uh, flipped off starring the Hans family of uh, Russell uh, in his line of work flipping houses. How how will Family Beef compared to Flipped Off? I've never I've never seen Flipped Off, so I I mean I don't know. I mean if 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 what I've seen of the Hans family on Survivor is any indication of what Flipped Off is like, then I'll tell you that this is gonna be nothing like it. <laughs> well, I, uh, Rob, I flipped it off. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> literally, I didn't see it because I seen that other hands boy, and I and I immediately flipped it off. Well, I mean, and again, you know, I I, I don't know if, I don't know what um, the Hans family was doing before Survivor, but my guess is that uh, that he wasn't a house flipper, that that's not what he did for a living. I mean, I don't know what he did because he claimed to be an oil tycoon, but then we weren't sure about that. But the the point is here, you know, it really is. This show is just it's an honest. It's an honest show about a, a family that has an old school, old fashioned American way of life. There's no nothing to put on here, and what we've captured in this show is what they've been doing 
for decades. There's no nothing different. This is what Tom and Bo and Poppy were doing way before Survivor. You know, a lot of us, we did Survivor, and, you know, we went back to the lives we had. They, they were perfectly happy and loved the lives that they had before, he did, before Tom did Survivor, and that's what this show is about. It's what they've been doing forever, and they're still doing it, and it's a beautiful thing. All right, we've got some questions coming in from our audience here that's watching us live. Uh, Susan O'Connor Frazier, she wants to know, Bo, what's it like to work every day with your dad and your grandpa? Is, that, is there a lot of pressure there to go to work uh, and, and work with uh, the two people that you grew up with? Well, it's kind of like, you know, you get, most people go to work and then uh, they come home and you got your work and you got your family separate, you know. Well, mine, I'm, it's all together, just like a big... Uh, a big cocktail that uh, I, you know, you learn I, from a young boy. I've had, you know, responsibilities to, uh, on the farm to do this and that. And I think being raised that way has made me the man I am, uh, as far as <clears throat> as that's concerned. But yeah, there's uh, there's always pressure when you're when you're making big time decisions and you're a third of that decision. Uh, you don't want to be the the part the 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 link that Brent that breaks the chain. Uh, because this chain's been strong long before me, and so I don't want to be that weak link. So there's pressure, but uh, we uh, we usually do a lot better under pressure. So what's it like to have your dad as your boss? Well, that can be debatable. Uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes he does a lot of bossing, but nobody listens. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I guess I would I would say Poppy's the CEO. Uh, I'd, I'd make Tom the treasurer. Uh, <laughs> no, I'd make Sandy the uh, treasurer. Yeah. Well, because, you know, if, if the the finance end of it between me and Tom and Raymond and, and Poppy, us three together couldn't get all these bills put together right. So my, my mother definitely is instrumental in getting that taken care of because without her, I know we'd be in a handbasket a long time ago. Yeah. Um, Susan also wants to know, Lex, what needs to happen for uh, this pilot to go for a series? What, what could people do uh, who wa want to watch the show this week? So that's a great question. So what we really, you know, what we would really love to see, uh, the, the obvious is tune in on August 7th on Wednesday, watch it, tell all your friends about it. <clears throat> We've been pretty busy uh, with uh, just trying to kind of really create a buzz and spread the word over social media. Um, there's a few places that everybody ought to really go. Um, we've got a Facebook page, so it's just facebook.com slash family beef. Go up on our page, um, like the page. There are also Nat Geo, National Geographic TV. If you just Google Nat Geo TV, you'll notice uh, if you search on uh, inside of Nat Geo, you do search for family beef, you'll find that we have um, pages on the Nat Geo website. And those pages, each one is dedicated to uh, the first two episodes. They've got Facebook like buttons as well. There are videos and previews that you can watch there. So if, I think there's a good six or seven previews. If you guys want to get a flavor of what the show's all about ahead of time, go up on Nat Geo on the website, check out the, uh, the episode pages, uh, hit the like buttons for the Facebook like buttons, tweet about it, just share it with your friends, spread the word. Um, you know, I mean, Rob, you know how it goes. In, in, in the world of TV... Nielsen is king, so the Nielsen ratings, the way those work is you've got about 25,000 households in the U.S. that, you know, are all basically watching TV, and whatever they watch is kind of what the networks decide is flavor of the day, and that's what's, what's working. So we're trying as much as possible to get as many people to spread the word so that we can somehow get these Nielsen households to watch. I mean, I, I truly believe, having watched this, not, not just because you know I'm a co-creator and an executive producer, but I really believe there's a quality TV show here. I think anybody that watches it is going to love it. So just have everybody tell your friends, watch it on Wednesday, go up on social media, tweet about it, like our Facebook page. You're going to dig it. It's, I mean, it's just a good show. Lex, what did you learn from Mark Burnett to create a, your own reality show? <laughs> Wow, that's a loaded question, Rob. <laughs> wow. Um, 
Well, I mean, I guess if if I had to say I learned one thing from it is you know, like whatever whatever you want to do, you do it. I I do what I want to do. I don't do it for anyone else. Tom and Bo are the same way. You know, if you've got if if there's something you believe in, you've got a dream, you should chase it, grab it by the balls, and go for it. Um, but honestly, I'll tell you what, Tom and I, and, and and you know, I'm probably speaking out of school here, and and this is probably, I mean, if if I had aspirations uh, to have some kind of a Hollywood career, this would be a career limiting. Um, statement, but um, to be totally honest with you, I I think that uh, making this show was for Tom and I was um, a, a great opportunity for us to flip the bird at um, at everybody, um, you know, maybe in, in SEG, Mark Burnett Productions, CBS, because you know what, honestly, they all had, and people like us, they had golden opportunities to make great TV after Survivor. All of us have, we've got minds, we've got ideas, we've got creativity, but you know, I think that um, they see, they, they've got a, a, a kind of a short-term view at all of us. They see us as, well, we're a commodity. You can, you can we, we, you know, we're gonna put these guys on an, a season of Survivor and when we're done, we've got another 16, um, 16 chumps that are happy to sign up and do it all over again and, and there'll be, where there's 16 more chumps, there'll be 60,000, 600,000 more that are lining up. But there are people that have great ideas, and you know, we're here to show them that without anybody's help. And granted, I mean, there was we definitely did get a nice, a nice little kind of step up <clears throat> in the fact that we got to do Survivor in the first place, and that did give us the opportunity to have some sort of a a platform to speak from, and 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 it made it easier probably for us to actually get this thing off the ground but when it when all said and done Tom, Bo, Poppy, me, you know all of the guys at Authentic Entertainment, Tough Cubby, Tam, Enter Tam Communications, we all worked we rolled our sleeves up, we worked hard, we made a great show and and that's because that's we, we decided to do it. it's not because anybody really helped us to do it. There you go Tom. <laughs> hey that's a, I'm saying it I, you know uh, but what a great opportunity this this was for our family and everybody, you know, just uh, to jump in here and have that. But we've uh, it's hard to uh, wipe a smile off a of face, you know. Uh, you know, this is kind of a dream. Uh, I never even thought about it. You know, it's just everyday life. And then now it's uh, come Wednesday, it's come to life. So uh, I've got a pretty big smile on my face there, and uh, so uh, I'm I'm hoping that. Uh, uh, people like it, but you know, it's like uh, uh, I was the only one that would marry Sandy, so we, you know, everybody's got their own choices. So uh, whatever happens, happens. But uh, we appreciate everybody, uh, especially our survivor friends or whoever that uh, jumped in here and helped us. I know that uh, Ethan's. I've heard from about. I've heard from more survivors in the last week than I have in the last year. So uh, just saying, you know, uh, go for it, old man, and uh, be watching. And from uh, uh, from California to uh, everywhere, and uh, so it's it's been really really good to see some hear from uh, all the old friends. Yeah, and and I mean we've had so much help from. That's the thing that you, I mean, you know, Rob, we've got we, we're lucky enough that we did this. We did, we had this whole survivor experience, and the experience itself was was brilliant. But the relationships and the friendships that we forged and built from from that experience. I mean, a lot of those have lasted a lifetime. You know, you you and I have known each other now for quite a while. There have been a lot of people like you, Rob, and and other folks that have helped Tom and I out now that, you know, we had this opportunity and we needed, you know, the troops out there to really kind of rally and help us out. And, you know, there have been people like, you know, you, Tanya, Ethan, Evil Dick from Big Brother because, you know, a lot of, we all run in, you know, our, our circles all kind of intersect. And there have been so many people that have been helpful. Johnny Fairplay has always been there for us and has always helped us out as well. And that's, you know, when, when all is said and done, I mean, we're thick as thieves and we run, we're like herd animals. We run together in the same herd. Yeah. Yeah, well, for me personally, anything I could do to help out any of the other survivors that are doing a project or Big Brother, Big Brother people as well that I've... Uh, met over the years, you know, anything I can do to help out anybody else uh, who's in our same boat with anything that they're doing. I mean, if, if you know, why, why not? I mean, we're all uh, sort of in the same situation. So always happy to hear 
what uh, people are doing in this space. And uh, like myself, somebody who's trying to you know do creative things, um, you know, and I have a platform to help people. I'm very happy to do it. Uh, here's a question from Fuggy Bootenling. Uh, he is a uh, longtime Survivor fan, and he wants to know. Uh, he says, Lex, Tom, and Ethan, greatest alliance of all time, in my opinion. Why do you think this friendship has stuck together so closely through so many years? Uh, I mean, there's been a lot of Survivor alliances. A lot of people make friends on Survivor, but uh, not too many people stay that close through, you know, a year, five years, ten years. How come uh, you guys have remained so close? I, I mean, I think it's really simple. We're, you know, I, I, I love these guys. They're, they're like brothers to me. And when we were out there in those extreme circumstances, um, you know, I think the three of us magnetically just kind of zeroed in on each other and we had fundamental things in common. We're just, you know, we're all of us are human beings. And when I met Tom, even though, you know, I looked at him and I saw, you know, a fat redneck and, and I know he looked at me and he said, well, there's, you know, a tattooed freak that's probably queer. Right, Tom? Uh, my very words, I think. Yeah, and and we looked at Ethan. I said, "Well, there's there's a, there's a golden boy. That's a beautiful boy. That uh, you know, well, he's the guy that you know in high school probably would have kicked my ass because I wasn't cool enough. I mean, but all that stuff on the surface really mattered nothing at all. Ultimately, we just we made a connection, and you know, it's just it, there's it's there's nothing. It's not rocket science. We just got to be good friends right off the get go." And we've stayed friends ever since. I, I talk to Tom and Ethan on a weekly basis. I love them like my family. And, I mean, it's, there's really nothing more to it than that. We have each other's backs. And we, what else do you need? We ha we, we've we honestly uh, had an alliance. We've, we still have an alliance, us three guys do, all the way through. So, you know... Uh, with Ethan, uh, he's had some hardships, and uh, uh, and you know all of us have stuck together. But our alliance has lasted uh, uh, what twelve years now, and yeah, it's I really mean, uh, it's you know it's, than, I mean you know, money isn't everything, guys. Uh, and that's and that's, that's the thing. I mean, I think all of us would agree that when we when when you know, and it sounds so cliched, but after Survivor Africa was over, you know, Ethan won the million dollars. Tom and I were happy to see him win the, win the million dollars, but the one thing that all three of us took away from that experience, as cliched as it sounds, that was the best thing of all was the relationship that we made. And, and that, you know, I, I could tell you right now, I could, I could burn through a million dollars in no time flat. It wouldn't take me very long. If I really tried to spend it, I could spend it quick. But something that's going to be around forever, and, you know, right up until the day that I take that dirt nap is going to be the friendship and the relationship that I have with Tom and Ethan. That's forever. And, and that's, you know, that's, I mean, that's, that right there is, is is the biggest prize that we got out of that out of that whole experience. Tom, will any other survivors be making cameos at, out here on Family Beef? Is there a chance that you might have Sue Hawk come and visit? <laughs> <laughs> chance in hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, but 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 honestly, you know, uh, if if this thing gets uh, as it grows. Uh, we plan to, you know, kind of uh, down the road have some uh, some some uh, friends from Survivor and pr maybe an enemy or two, and d we'll see how they <laughs> walk the walk and talk the talk. You know, uh, it's a little bit different when you uh, you got your boots about uh, ankle deep in cow manure. It it got a different twist than the concrete, and uh, I think people will see how. Uh, they may understand how I, you know, uh, played Survivor a little bit more by watching this with our handshake uh, on a, on a fifty thousand, uh, a fifty thousand pounds of cattle, and we make a, a phone call or a handshake deal, and it locks it in, and uh, I think that that people seeing some of the stuff that we do, uh, financially and every day, our. Uh, our words are bond, and you know they'll see why it was hard for me on Survivor to play a dirty little game. Now, speaking of Survivor, do you, uh, are you guys still keeping up with Survivor? Have you guys been uh, watching this last season of the show? 
Yes, I do. I, I, I keep up with the Survivor. I try to uh, to uh, watch it, you know, uh, every, every chance I get, I try to watch it. So, Tom, what did you think of this past season with Cochran being the winner? Well, you know what? That little bony Cochran, I, <laughs> I, I kind of got to like that guy, and I was pulling for him. He is, he is as smart as I am dumb. And it, it just made me <laughs> so happy that that little boneyard ate. I, he was a bony that I was afraid he'd blow off into the ocean and be a uh, shark bait. But he, 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 he really hung in there. And, and I'm glad for one, uh, I don't, he's forgot more than I'll ever know about survivor. I cannot believe a guy knows so much of, about the game. And, uh, I, I really was rooting for him. So, yeah, hats off, Cocker. You know, uh, you bring up a good point about, uh, you know, handshake deals and what that means on, on Survivor. And so the big point, the flashpoint on this season that, you know, everybody was all hot and bothered about was this uh, deal that was sort of made with Dawn and Brenda. And when, uh, you know, Dawn lost her retainer, in the lake, and then Brenda went and dove and got it out, and then she said, I'm never going to vote you out, I promise. And <laughs> then we had uh, this whole uh, kerfuffle that happened where then yeah. Dawn stabbed Brenda in the back, and then Brenda said, I want you to take your teeth out at the final travel <laughs> council. So what was your take on all that? I, I really liked it because... You, you know, that's a good old woman there to take her teeth out. And uh, I had a grandma that coughed and lost her teeth. And we, as a boy, we'd pick it up and stuff. But women, I mean, that is a huge thing. I'm married to one now that can't even, uh, that hides and brushes her a uh, little partial or something. And I sneak around and catch her and she won't even take them out for Halloween. I just raise hell. But. I thought that was so good, uh, but you know when when we were on Survivor, that's been years ago. You've got to be a dirty little mean guy now to win it, and uh, you know a lot of things has changed. You know, uh, uh, you've got to tell a, a lie fourteen foot long and be green. And I love that with the women and the way it happened and stuff. I mean that that's why Survivor is still still clicking along because. Um, that's the way it is now, and if and and just like a guy like me who's a uh, you know uh, just a handshake deal. Listen, that's not that day is gone. Uh, I mean, Survivor is a game that the handshake deal was uh, old school. Now, there's a new kid in town now, <laughs> and it's Cochran. <laughs> uh, uh, here's a question that's really for uh, for both of you guys. This is Rushmore wants to know: uh, Would Big Tom go back on Survivor? And uh, Lance Halsey wants to know if Mark Burnett called, would uh, Lex do uh, Survivor with Rob again? I'm not sure if he's talking about me or Boston Rob. But I guess the the question for both of you guys: uh, Would either of you go and play Survivor again? Uh, what? Well well, Lex, I'll say I definitely would, and uh, because uh, you know I'm 58 now, it, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm, I'm not that old man you think I am. But and I was on that show with you, Rob. Yeah, and I and, I, it, and and we were uh, great friends. Yeah, and. Uh, well, not, and, not and good I'm enough for you saying, to not vote me out, Tom. Oh. I thought we were, <laughs> well, we were better oh, friends. Oh. Oh. I will be, Where was that I will handshake deal that you. day? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was so afraid that it was going to be me that I oh. didn't know what to do. Okay. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, I would I would love to have a uh, another crack at it because uh, – when I went on the first African one, I never watched the show. So I didn't know I was out there going who, what, where, or when. And, uh, and then, you know, uh, now I'm a little more savvy. Uh, I can even spell survivor now. And it's uh, after 12 years. So I would like to have it. He's been practicing. Shot at, uh, Good. <laughs> practicing spelling it. 
<laughs> but uh, you know, there's always a. Uh, uh, I, I don't know, but especially uh, if it gets to the end, I thought that they might bring. A, 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 it'd be nice for the old man to go out there and get another sh one more shot. Yeah, um, and I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I would or not. I, I mean, I, I, I never say never. Who knows if the if the timing and the circumstances were right, perhaps. But um, to be totally honest, I. I love my life the way it is right now, and I, I, I don't know if I would want to completely re-up and reset it. Um, I think that uh, we had something really special back back in the old days, Survivor Africa. I mean, it's like your first girl. It's it's never you know it's never the same. The second time, third time, fourth time, you try to get that first you know reproduce that first kind of excitement. Um, it's just. I, you know, I, I don't think, and, and we learned that, you know, and Rob, you probably remember the same thing, going on All-Stars. It wasn't quite the same as the first time you did it. No, no, it definitely wasn't. It definitely wasn't, and and honestly, I have such, I have such great memories, and it, and that experience in Africa was so special. Um, if I went back to do it again, it would be without any intention to try to reproduce the first experience. It would be something completely different, but honestly, at this point, if I got the call, I mean, you know, and Tom and I, we actually both got the call for this last season to do the, uh, to do the Survivor. What is it, Blood versus Water? And really? uh, yeah, and 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 both of us, uh, both of us turned them down. Um, that doesn't Wait, mean we turned. You said no. I said no. Is this a first that that survivors say no to go back on Survivor? I don't know if it's the first, but I'm sure that it's it's probably good for uh, CBS and and Mark Burnett every once in a while to hear somebody say no. Cause <laughs> oh my I, God! I think I think seriously, it's it's probably good for them to realize that you know that sometimes their shit does stink a little bit, and um, you know I you know I don't know if, if will I do it again? Who knows? But at so this point now, I love my life the way it is. I think I'm gonna s stick with it the way it is, and. Do new things rather than try to do something again. And Tom, you didn't want to go back with Bucky Bo. Uh, you know what? I, I really did. Uh, I wouldn't I, let him. <laughs> Lex, you talked him out of it? No, I didn't no. talk him out of it. But we family we were, beef. We were, we were we in the were middle in, of family beef production. Yeah, we were knee deep in family beef, and I couldn't believe after all these years uh, I get the call, and uh, I was going, "Oh Lordy!" Uh, I said, uh, "What is what's happened here?" I thought it was a joke because, and then, but we were just like knee deep in this show, and uh, it just was no way we could do it, and it it, it all happened uh, within a week or, or maybe two. That it was, uh, we were filming, and uh, we got the call to go, and uh, just couldn't work it out, Rob. At, at that, you know, and uh, Bo was all pumped up and squealing and screaming and uh, making fire up here on the farm. And, <laughs> uh, it, it was hell. So well, he makes uh, fire every time he lays down with his old lady in the bed in the oh, bedroom. So oh, I don't, oh, he God, knows all about making fire, but the you know at the end of, at the end of the know. day, Rob. You know, it's like, do you want to do you want to um, go on a show where you got to maybe you might get one sixteenth or one eighteenth worth of uh, coverage on the show that you got to share with the hands, or, no, or do you want to have your own show? But you could have had two eighteenths. <laughs> oh, still not a very good bargain. You, that's right, yeah, well, better than usual. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is from uh, Narborg. He wants to know. Are there any good stories uh, from the Ponderosa on Africa or All Stars? Now I know you guys uh, weren't there in the Ponderosa for too long on uh, the Africa, not really that long on the All Stars. But any good Ponderosa stories from outside of the game? Ah. Oh, no, God, there's, I... there's a lot. There's there's a lot. There's a lot that I I don't think I'd necessarily want to share because I, you know that that would be telling. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Of, I'm trying to think of something that I could actually tell. Yeah. Because God knows. Well, I mean, you know, there's lots of stories. There's good stories from the Ponderosa. Ponderosas were all that. Ponderosas where the shit happens. Yeah. 
I have uh, some good stories. For, uh, for, I was at the Ponderosa for one day on Survivor the Amazon, and I probably have uh, ten times more good Ponderosa stories from that season than I did from the 35 days or whatever, however long I was in Ponderosa on All Stars with uh, Rudy and Tina and uh, Richard for uh, for a, a day or two. I might I might have a couple of good stories. Well, can can you can you share a good Amazon Ponderosa story? Now I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Uh, you know what? That uh, that those are the kinds of stories that uh, <laughs> that uh, Mrs. Sesternino doesn't like us to talk about. Uh, so <laughs> I, I hear I hear you loud and clear. I'll yeah. tell you one thing that amazed me when I was out when we were in All Stars and we were on the out in the Ponderosa, which was essentially just like a little tiny rock. Yeah, um, it was, was an island that was. I mean, you could walk around the circumference of that island completely in about three minutes. It was so small. Yeah, it was like a rock with about ten huts, and in the middle of flipping nowhere, and still there were people that are super fans of the show that somehow figured out not only where we were shooting but figured out exactly where the Ponderosa was and they used to have security people that would kind of walk the circumference of this island because these super fans would be coming coming upon the island in kayaks with cameras they would actually come from like Panama and other parts of the Pearl Islands in kayaks to try to get pictures of the people that had gotten boot not, booted out. Yeah. No, I, I, I couldn't believe it. Like like hostages, right? That they would, like, you go into tribal council, they put, like, you know, bags over your head so right. they couldn't see who was going into the tribal council. Exactly. They had, yeah. I, there must have been a big sale on, that was right about the time that that movie, that horror movie Scream came out, <laughs> and there must have been, like, a, you know, a huge sale on those, like, black, you know, big hooded, <laughs> Yeah, cloak, cloak things, because all of us had to get dressed up in those things every time we went to tribal council. I was surprised they didn't have us wear the the flipping scream mask as well, so that people couldn't see our faces. But we couldn't go to tribal council without being completely hooded, covered, and hidden, because there were so many people that they thought might get. And that was also the time they actually had all of us had to have our torches snuffed out on camera before the game even began. Do you remember that? A little bit, a little bit. So <laughs> when we when we first when we first went out to to, to the Pearl Islands, it was like yeah. that whole week where they had like People Magazine and everybody they'd come out they'd interview so it was like a whole week of just like press junkets. And during that week, they actually took us to the tribal council area, that treehouse that they built, and they had us systematically one by one go in front of Probst with our torch, and he'd say. Tribe has spoken, and he would snuff out the torch, and there was a camera crew, and they would shoot it, so that basically, if word got out on you know on the interwebs, you know if if somebody spilt a spoiler ahead of time, that they could always throw out a little you know something to trick them with a, a little video of someone's torch getting snuffed out. All eighteen of us had our torches snuffed out before the game even started. I'm probably not even supposed to talk about that, but I don't care. I think the statute of limitations is over on that. I think we're closing <laughs> on ten, on ten years. I think I think right. Um, and thank God that they did that because uh, there were no spoilers whatsoever on Survivor All Stars. So that, that was it. Looked like the system worked perfectly. Um, <laughs> So, uh, let's see, uh, one or two more questions. Susan O'Connor Frazier wants to know, how many of your viewers are going to join us on the Family Beef Twitter party? Uh, well, I'll, would, I'll be there. Yeah, a lot of people, right? Uh, yeah, I'll be there. Are, are you going to be, Big Tom, are you going to be live tweeting the show on Wednesday? <laughs> He's going to try. <laughs> I, I'm honestly, I've got some help, uh, uh, but I don't know if I can tweet or I do whatever I'm supposed to do, but with I've got an assistant here that's going to help me. So I'm having some problems uh, with this technology. Rob, are you going to be on that uh, on that party with us? Um, you know, this is I feel like this is the first I'm hearing about. What so what? It's uh, is there a East Coast and West Coast uh, airing of the Family Beef? You better believe it, because we believe that our East Coast brothers are are just as uh, just as important as our. Left Coast Brothers. So we're going to have a Twitter party um, at, I guess that would be, what, 6 o'clock? 
my time, Pacific time, so 9 p.m. Eastern and 9 p.m. Pacific time. We're going to be okay, doing well, uh, two of them. Maybe I can catch you guys on the West Coast. East Coast, I'm going to be driving home from work, so I, I'm not allowed to tweet and drive anymore, but I will see uh, <laughs> on the West Coast version. So uh, the show is Family Beef. Uh, check it, You want to check it out on Wednesday night on uh, Nat Geo Regular, uh, the, the Nat Geo Classic, and uh, th there you have it, to watch two episodes this Wednesday night. It's going to be good. That's right. Well, hey, uh, Rob, I, I certainly thank you for uh, for having us on, and uh, and, and uh, I hope you. Uh, I want your feedback on what do you think of Family Beef, and uh, when that little baby's born, we will make him a, a little Buchanan. Uh, we'll, we'll start him out a little cow herd of his own. So uh, I, I will give you give you the firstborn calf. How's that? Oh, for your well, what do I do with it? Well, what? Well, uh, we got a little goat. We just—it's uh, like a dog. You you can uh, just kind of train it, a yard train it. <laughs> I don't think I can have that <laughs> in my apartment. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Well, but well, that gives you a good farm. reason to go out and visit the farm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Tom, that Nicole and I are expecting a baby, uh, not a survivor baby. Like you once uh, said that Rob and Amber were going to, you predicted <laughs> that uh, Rob and Amber were going to make a survivor baby all the way back in 2003, and uh, they've actually had three survivor babies since then. So your predictions have come true. So, uh, I they, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the crystal ball, the crystal ball. Now, I, I know you've probably named a lot of cows uh, in your day. I wanted to give you an opportunity to give Nicole and I some baby names uh, for the baby <laughs> Sesternino coming in September. Uh, uh, crowbar. Crowbar. That's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> That's if what you it, said if it's Robin <laughs> Amber's baby. If it's a boy, <laughs> name it Crowbar. <laughs> and or Elrod, one of the two for a boy. And what about for and, a girl? Uh, oh, if it's a girl, I've always liked Lulu. Lulu. <laughs> yeah. Then these are people names. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, well, let's let, let's be honest. Elrod, you named a cow Elrod a few months ago, so I I know about that. <laughs> I, I've met Elrod after Matt Elrod, the Survivor player. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, anybody that would, I had uh, Bucky Bo Buchanan is Bo's name, so I'm not the best in names. So uh, I'm not <laughs> the guy you should have been asking. <laughs> have you ever named any cows after survivors? Yes, uh, we actually. Uh, when we, after I got back from Survivor, we had a whole herd of cattle with the same names. Uh, we had Lex, Ethan. We had the whole gang up here, and uh, uh, actually, up until just years, uh, you know, a few years that uh, we've, you know, they've passed away, or we've well, tried. Well, it was unfortunate. The Boston Rob, he bit the dust pretty quick. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> yeah, he caught a disease. It was a viral, uh, venereal disease. Venereal. <laughs> got oh, <him>. no. <laughs> and unfortunately, we had to put. Him down <laughs> with impunity. Oh, poor, poor Boston Rob. Oh no. Uh, what oh, about was no. there a, was there a Kim Johnson cow? Oh yes, yes. We had an <laughs> we had an older animal that we called Kim Jan Johnson that was, had a little. Uh, 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 she was limping a little bit, and uh, but everybody everybody had a name on the farm. But uh, it, it it really people would come and go. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you know they would be a lot of fans come by and see each cow and or whatever I had them named. You know, so the survivor tree uh, uh, didn't live on, but uh, it it did for several years. So we had a lot of fun with it. How about a cow named Cochran? Would you ever name a cow after Cochran? No, we we've got better stock than than, than <laughs> Cochran. Uh, bony cows don't make a lot of money. I think uh, a goat, know, got, maybe a goat, Tom. What about a goat? Yeah, yeah, we may get Cochran on a on a goat, uh, <laughs> but uh, right now uh, he he's not good for the herd, to be honest with you, as far as cattle. But I'll tell you what. I may hire him as a secretary to keep up with my books because um, 
uh, I, watching him just made me realize how smart he is. And uh, I, I'm a Cochran fan. I've got to get him up to the farm. I, he's too he's too bony to to shovel poop, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get him an inside job. And how about a cow named the Specialist? Oh, <laughs> oh, that was good, Rob. Yeah, I, I think I think I've got that honed in there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we've got a pet goat, a, a goat that uh, Bo's little two-year-old girl's been raising on a bottle named Pee Wee. So you had to, uh, a little later on, you had to check him out. He's been uh, a lot of people. Have to, uh, we've got people from all around come and feed Pee Wee. So he's getting, he's getting pretty heavy. Uh, so uh, we got to slow him down. Between him and Sandy, we got to slow him down just a little bit. All right. So there, there you have it. Family Beef uh, this Wednesday night on Nat Geo. Uh, check it out. Use the hashtag Family Beef uh, if you want to tweet about it. And uh, Lex, how do we get to the Family Beef Facebook page? Family Beef forward slash, or no, Facebook.com forward slash Family Beef. And check us out on the National Geographic TV page. Rob, thank you so much for having us. So appreciate it. Much yeah, love to you, you and your and your beautiful wife. And congratulations again on on your baby. I cannot wait, cannot wait to see your baby. Oh well, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting. And, and we've got some. You know what you're having yet? Uh, we uh we may or may not know that uh, we have not. Uh -huh. uh, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> if you want to follow uh, Lex on Twitter, he's at Lex Vandenberg and uh, Big Tom is now on Twitter at Big Tom Cannon. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> oh uh, well, we ain't sure. <laughs> we're not sure about that. <laughs> I've not found that page yet, but uh, I'm still searching. <laughs> All right. All right. So check it out. Uh, that is uh, Family Beef uh, this Wednesday. I will be back on uh, Thursday with a all-new uh, live Big Brother recap after the double eviction. And no Ian Terry this week. We'll be back with uh, Eric Stein, America's player, will join us in his place. Uh, so plenty to do uh, to talk about the Big Brother. Uh, in the meantime, you know, uh, say, say hello to me on Twitter as well. I'm at Rob Cisternino. Uh, check out Family Beef on Wednesday, and we'll talk to you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Rob. Thank Thanks, you, Rob. Rob.